welcome to the tutorial session on basic electrical engineering made simple in this session we shall take up basic circuit concepts and discuss about ohms law friends do you know that dr george simon ohm was a famous german physicist best known for his theory of electricity during the period 1789 to 1854 he stated ohm's law as early as 1827 and i am extremely happy to dedicate this session to dr George Simon Ohm Before we discuss about Ohm's law we shall define an electric circuit An electric circuit is uh, defined as a combination of active and passive circuit elements connected in some configuration Then what are active circuit elements Active circuit elements are those which are capable of delivering energy. For example, take up a battery or a DC generator. They are capable of delivering DC energy, or they are capable of providing DC voltage across its terminals. Similarly, consider an AC generator or an alternator. It is capable of delivering AC energy, or it is capable of providing AC voltage across its terminals. Then, what are passive circuit elements? Passive circuit elements are those which are capable of only receiving energy. For example, a resistance. an inductance and a capacitance all are passive circuit elements but the resistance circuit element absorbs energy and it converts in the form of either heat or light for example consider an incandescent lamp its filament is a resistance and the energy received by an incandescent lamp is converted into light similarly take up a water heater its filament again is a resistance and the energy received by a water heater is converted into heat similarly if we consider an inductance the energy received by the inductance is converted and stored in the form of an electromagnetic field whereas the energy received by the capacitor is stored in the form of electrostatic field we shall discuss more in detail about these circuit elements in some other tutorial but now we shall consider only resistance because we are discussing on dc circuit therefore a resistance can be defined as a property of a circuit element which is capable of only receiving energy and the energy received by it is absorbed and converted in the form of either heat or light and you will be happy to know that the unit of resistance is ohm which is named after that great scientist george simon ohm who stated ohm's law friends now let us discuss about ohm's law to understand ohm's law consider a simple circuit consisting of resistance and a source of e volts if you examine the circuit you see that 
the resistance is directly connected across a source of phi volts. Now, Ohm's law states that the current flowing through the circuit element is directly proportional to the voltage applied across it, provided the temperature remains constant. It is very interesting to note that Dr. Ohm added this phrase provided the temperature remains constant because the material resistance is dependent upon temperature. There are some materials such as silver, copper, aluminium, tungsten, iron, platinum whose resistance increases as temperature increases. So, these materials are called as the materials having positive temperature coefficient. Similarly, there are some materials like graphite, carbon, germanium, silicon whose resistance decreases as temperature increases and these materials are called as the materials having negative temperature coefficient. Now, as per the Ohm's law, current flowing through the circuit element is directly proportional to the voltage applied across it. And if we look at the circuit, because the resistance is directly connected across a source of V volts, the voltage across the resistance, if we take equal to Vr, and that is equal to V. Now, as per Ohm's law, the current in the circuit I is proportional to V or I is equal to V divided by R where R is known as the proportionality constant and it is called as resistance and the unit of resistance you know is Ohm. Now, the equation that we have got by Ohm's law, which is I is equal to V by R, will generate two other forms of equations. One, V is equal to I into R and R is equal to V by I. So, these three equations which relate Ohm's law or which relate the voltage and current flowing through the circuit element can be used depending upon what the parameter we know in the circuit. Friends, it is very interesting to note that the Ohm's law can be represented in a graphical form. To understand this, consider the circuit shown in figure 1. A voltage source is directly connected across the resistance and terminal A is at a positive potential and terminal B is at a negative potential or point A is at a higher potential compared to that of the point B. And if you look at the direction of the current which flows from A to B, the meaning is in a circuit element, a passive circuit element like resistance, the current flows from a higher potential point to a lower potential point. And the polarity of the voltage across the resistance is such that the point A is at a higher potential and point B is at a lower potential. Current flows in the clockwise direction. Now, if you consider the figure B, wherein the polarity of the source is reversed, so the direction of the current also is reversed. Of course, here also the current flows from a higher potential point to a lower potential point because B is at a higher potential and A is at a lower potential. Now, there are two parameters of different polarity. For example, the polarity of voltage of figure 1 is opposite to that of figure 2. Similarly, 
the direction of current in figure 1 is in a direction opposite to that of the current in figure 2. So, to account for this aspect of change in polarity and change in direction of the current, we shall assign sign for the polarity and the direction of current. For example, in figure 1, let us assign the voltage polarity as plus phi and the current polarity which is in the clockwise direction as plus i. It means the voltage current relation of figure 1 is tracing in the first quadrant wherein the x axis is plus phi volts and y axis is plus i amperes. Similarly, in comparison with figure 1, if you consider figure 2, the polarity of voltage is minus V there and the direction of current is minus I. Therefore, Phi I relation of figure 2 is tracing the third quadrant wherein X axis is minus V and Y axis is minus I amperes. Now, you understand that the Ohm's law is applicable to a circuit wherein the resistance of the circuit element remains a constant. So, a constant resistance is nothing but the reciprocal slope of the line. If you find the reciprocal slope of the line represented you find that that is equivalent to resistance. And you also know that if the line relation is a straight line, the slope remains constant at all points. Therefore, the VI relation of figure 1 and figure 2 is a same, say, straight line passing through 0 tracing in the first and the third quadrant because the value of the resistance in both the circuits is considered to be same and is constant. Therefore, we can conclude that according to Ohm's law, phi relation is a straight line passing through zero. Is it not interesting? Friends, let us discuss the resistance line concept in more detail because it is very interesting and important. To understand this resistance line concept, consider resistance line 1, resistance line 2, resistance line 3 and resistance line 4 as shown in the graphical representation. Now you have to understand that all these four resistance lines shown are passing through zero and are the resistance of four different circuits whose resistances are different but each resistance of a circuit remains constant. Therefore, all resistance lines are straight lines and all of them are passing through zero. So, if you find the resistance of line 1, for example, you take 12 volts divided by 2 ampere will give 6 ohm. Therefore, the resistance line 1 represents 6 ohm resistance line. Similarly, if you consider line 2, its value is 12 volts divided by 4 amperes. It gives you 3 ohm resistance. Therefore, line 2 can be considered to be a resistance line of 3 ohms. Now, you observe another very important concept. Suppose if line 1 is rotated about the origin towards 
y axis and takes a position of line 2, then its value of resistance decreases. Similarly, a line like line number 2 is rotated about the origin towards x axis to occupy a position of line 1, then its value increases. What does this mean? If a resistance line is rotated about the origin towards y axis, its value goes on decreasing. If a resistance line is rotated about the origin towards x axis, its value goes on increasing. Now, I am going to ask you a very important question and the question is, what is the resistance of line 3 which is lying along the y axis? Your answer should be 0 ohm because if you observe resistance line 3, it has 0 voltage and a finite current and you know that a zero voltage and a finite current implies short circuit. Therefore, a resistance which is short circuited is equivalent to zero ohm. Similarly, if I ask you what is the value of the resistance of a line which is lying along the x-axis? Your answer should be the resistance of the line lying along the x-axis tends to infinity. If you observe line 4, you find that it has zero current and a finite voltage. So, you know that a zero current and a finite voltage imply open circuit and if the resistance is open, it is equivalent to infinite resistance. So, if you do not understand this concept, I suggest you go through my video on open circuit and short circuit concept. It is very interesting to note that these resistance line rotate about the origin and they lie in the first and the third quadrant only because the resistance value is considered to be positive. Friends, now we have arrived at a point of conclusion. Of course, the first conclusion is the statement of Ohm's law. The Ohm's law states that the current flowing through the circuit element is directly proportional to the voltage applied across it provided the temperature of the circuit element remains constant. According to Ohm's law, the VI relation is graphically represented by a straight line passing through zero on xy coordinate axis. The reciprocal slope of the line represents the resistance of the circuit. Now you understand a very important concept. The resistance line can be considered to be rotating about the origin as the value of the resistance changes. If the line moves towards y axis, the value of the resistance goes on decreasing, whereas if the line moves towards x axis, the value of the resistance goes on increasing. Therefore, the resistance of the line lying along the y axis is zero, whereas the resistance of the line lying along the x-axis tends to infinity. Further, you have to understand the important relations that are given by Ohm's law. We have three relations. One relation is 
I is equal to V by R, another R is equal to V by I, and the third V is equal to I into R. And friends, these relations are to be appropriately used depending upon what parameters that we know and what parameter is required to be found out. I hope the discussion on Ohm's law is very clearly understood by you all so that you can confidently apply Ohm's law whenever you start solving the network. Thank you for watching.